Hello, and welcome to Unk Popular Opinions, a safe space for fans of BTS and other K-pop groups to ask the tough question, what do I think of this? I'm your host, Ginger Nuna, and today, to celebrate their performance at the American Music Awards with Coldplay, let's do a deep dive into some of BTS's previous collaborations. I've mentioned in the past that I am what many of us have started to refer to as a quarantine army, and one of the advantages of being a quarantine army is that when I started looking into BTS, I had a lot of time to just dig around the internet and find out everything I could about the group. And that's where I came across most of these collaborations. I think I'm going to cover almost all of them, but if there are any that I missed, please let me know because I would love to hear all the collaborations that BTS has put out. If we were to talk about all of the collaborations BTS has ever done in any capacity, this episode would probably take a few hours. So to keep it from being exorbitantly long, I did put in a few parameters. First one is that these are all post-debut collaborations that are from non-BTS albums. So for example, if it is a remix that you find on a BTS album, like Idol featuring Nicki Minaj, it's not going to be featured in this episode. I also didn't include any collaborations within just the members or from their mixtapes. All of these collaborations also include a performance from one or more of the members. So if the member worked as a producer but didn't perform on the track, it's not going to be featured today. And finally, these are collaborations with people, not businesses. I know that probably sounds silly, but BTS has collaborated with, I think, four businesses over the years to make music. Um, the most recent being Suga's writing Over the Horizon for Samsung. Even with all of those stipulations, I still managed to find 24 songs to share with you guys today. I've added all of the available songs to the Spotify edition of the episode. I've pieced them in after the description of each song. And if a song isn't on Spotify, there's a link in the show notes. I also don't want anyone to miss out on these songs. So I have created a YouTube playlist with all of the songs from this episode. And I've also put a link for that in the show notes. You might be wondering why I didn't just put the music in the episode, because that, of course, would have been a lot easier. And I didn't do that because of copyright laws. And frankly, that was the right thing to do because as consumers, we want to make sure that we are streaming and getting our music from platforms that are paying the people who created the music that we're listening to. And if I were just taking stuff and sticking it in my podcast, then they wouldn't be getting paid for their hard work. I think the best place to start our collaborations is with the ones that are credited to BTS as a whole. And I say credited because none of these songs actually feature all seven members. The very first collaboration from the group was back in December 2013, so just six months after their debut. RM, Jungkook, 2AM's Joe Kwan, 8's Juhi, and soloist Lim Jong-hee joined together for something called the Big Hit Christmas Project, and they put together a song called Perfect Christmas. And as far as I can tell, this is actually the first collaboration between label mates within Big Hit. There's been a lot of discussion lately about how the first collaboration within what's now HYBE was Yunjin from TXT working on Blockbuster for Enhypen, but this one happened almost seven years before that. And of course, I had to start off the list with a song that isn't available on Spotify, so I do have a link for Perfect Christmas in the show notes. Stevie Oki is probably best known by ARMY as the collaborator for what I think is the objectively superior Mic Drop Remix. He also collaborated on the one of the most tragically beautiful songs for the vocal line, The Truth Untold. And BTS in 2018 returned the favor by collaborating on one of Steve's tracks. The song is called Wasted On Me, and it's sung by Jungkook and has rap by RM. Jimin's often credited as doing vocals as well, but I haven't found any reputable sources that back that up. 
And when I listen to the track, I feel pretty confident that the harmonies people think are Jimin are actually just Jungkook doubled up with himself. Uh, Another example of this is there's a cover that Namjoon and Jungkook did of Troy Sivan's Fools. And toward the end of the song, when Jungkook is singing with a higher harmony, he is actually singing with himself. The third collaboration is the song Who. Um, That's from 2020. It was a collaboration with Lauv. And this one, even though it's credited to being BTS, is Jimin and Jungkook. You might know the name Lauv because he featured on the remix of BTS's Make It Right. And what I think is really cool about this song is that most songs are written in 4-4 time, but this one is in 3-4 time, so it almost sounds like a really sad, sexy waltz. Savage Love Laxed Siren Beat BTS Remix by Josh685 and Jason Derulo is probably the most famous collaboration because it earned BTS their second number one on the Billboard Hot 100. It was released back in October 2020, with the chorus being sung by none other than Jungkook. But what I think is the coolest part is that the second verse is a rap verse that was written by Hobi and Yoongi. And not only do they write it, they perform the entire thing in Korean. Just as a side note, in a previous episode, I mentioned that clout chasing in the music business isn't really a thing. This is the exception that I was alluding to. Setting aside the fact that Jason Derulo tried to straight up steal this beat from Josh 685 by not giving him credit or even getting permission in the first place, the song only made it to number one after the BTS remix was released. Did he thank them? No, of course not. And that, dear listeners, is clout chasing. But I digress. Now let's get into the collaborations by individual members. The only collaboration from a member of the vocal line is actually by V. V wrote the song Snowflower. He put it out on YouTube and SoundCloud last Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve 2020. And what's really cool about this song is that, yes, he wrote it and he produced it, but he enlisted the help of his friend Peak Boy. Peak Boy is one of V's closest friends and a part of his friend group called the Wooga Squad. And Peak Boy co-produced, co-wrote, and performed on the song with him. This means that the bulk of our collaborations come from the rap line. And normally, we go in fan chant order, but today I decided, let's mix it up. Let's go in age order, which is almost fan chant order, if I'm being honest. But we're going to start with Suga. Suga has four performance collaborations. The earliest one is the one I think the fewest people probably know about. In early 2019, he collaborated with veteran artist Lee Sora to make the song Song Request. And what is really cool about Song Request is that Yoongi wrote the lyrics while working with one of his idols. The person who wrote the song and produced it was Tableau from Epic High. And Yoongi has mentioned many times over the years how important Epic High is to him as a rapper. So I think it's really cool that he got a chance to work with somebody that he really looked up to. Suga's second collaboration came at the end of 2019. He worked on the song Suga's Interlude with Halsey for their album Manic. And this is a cool song because it introduced Yoongi as a solo artist to the Western market. When you listen to Suga's interlude, something I really love about it is that it feels like a companion piece or a continuation to his song Interlude Shadow from Map of the Soul 7. And you probably already know this, but this partnership came about after Halsey collaborated with BTS on Boy With Love. My personal favorite Yoongi collaboration is the song Eight with IU, which was released as a single back in May 2020. This is one of those songs where he really had a hand in everything. He was a performer, he wrote it, he produced it, and he's even credited with playing the piano and the synthesizer. 
The song and the music video are just gorgeous. They're equal parts hopeful and heartbreaking. And it's one of those songs that is mourning loss, but also dreaming about reunification. And really even talking about it makes me want to cry. So be sure to check it out. Yoongi's most recent collaboration was 2020's Blueberry Eyes with Max. Max collaborated with Suga's alter ego, August D, on his second mixtape, D2, on the song Burn It. And fans were really excited when they found out that Yoongi was going to return the favor and perform a collaboration on Max's album, Color Vision. What I think is super sweet is that Max wrote Blueberry Eyes as a love letter to his fiance, and Yoongi's contribution to this was he wrote the second verse, which is in Korean, and while Max is professing his love for his now wife, Yoongi is professing his love for ARMY, and a really fun fact is that Max learned Yoongi's rap so he could recite it in the music video. So those are Suga's collaborations, and we're going to move on to J-Hope's. J-Hope has the fewest collaborations, but I think his collaborations are probably the most well-known. The big one, of course, is Chicken Noodle Soup. Chicken Noodle Soup is a remake of a 2006 song by Webstar and Young B. And the way this came about was in a V-Live, Hobie mentioned that This is one of those songs that means a lot to him because he listened to it a lot when he was learning how to dance. So Hobie met Becky G at the 2019 Billboard Music Awards, and he was looking for someone to collaborate with on this song, and they ended up working together and making this trilingual masterpiece. It's really cool because they pay respect to their very different roots in English, Korean, and Spanish. And of course, it has the catchiest dance. Okay, listeners, I lied earlier. The following collaboration is technically pre-debut, but I had to include it. Way back in 2012, almost a year before BTS debuted, J-Hope was featured on Joe Kwan's song, Animal. You might recognize that name from before. Joe Kwan is a member of 2AM, And he was part of the collaboration between RM and Jungkook on Perfect Christmas. And I felt like I had to include this song for a couple of reasons. First is because J-Hope technically doesn't appear on this song. It's Jung Hoseok. This was the first glimpse that we would have into the man that we know and love as J-Hope. And the other reason is because Mr. Sun, BTS's choreographer, is one of the backup dancers. We're going to wrap up our collaborations by talking about RM, who happens to have more collaborations than everybody else combined. RM's first collaboration was back in March 2015. He worked on a song called Buku Buku, It was done by a Korean hip-hop group called MFBTY, which is an acronym for My Fans Are Better Than Yours. (laughs) I kind of love that. He contributed the lyrics and performed, and there were two other featured artists, EE and Dino J. And his raps are braggadocious, and rightfully so. I mean, it's Namjoon. The lyrics of this collaboration are a little bit more timid than what we find in other collaborations with RM, but only slightly. And I think it's probably because the song itself, Buku Buku, literally means shy shy in Korean. The last line RM says translates to, I'm shy, but I'll reveal it now. Even my poop smells like jasmine. That might be the biggest TMI ever. (laughs) Back in 2014, BTS had the opportunity to travel to L.A., and they filmed a docuseries called American Hustle Life, where they tried to learn more about American hip-hop culture. And the series itself is fascinating and also really cringy at times. But one of the coolest things that came out of this was when they got to meet with Warren G. Warren G., 
is one of the most influential voices in 90s West Coast hip hop. And after filming American Hustle Life, he and RM stayed in contact and they ended up working together on a song called PDD, which stands for Please Don't Die. That was released as a single in March 2015. It's similar, I would say, to BTS's Cypher series. It's a diss track. And what it is, is Namjoon is requesting that his haters not die. At least not until he's gotten his revenge. It sounds really similar to his first mixtape, RM, which was actually released a few weeks after this song. Another one of RM's earliest collaborations was 2015's Fantastic. This song, which features Mandy Ventris, was written for the Marvel film Fantastic Four. What's cool is, even though it's for a Marvel movie, both English and Korean lyrics are used. And it's not really a great song. It might be my least favorite collaboration of his. But it's really fun trivia for anybody who thinks that Friends by V and Jimin is the first song on a Marvel soundtrack that features someone from BTS, because it's not. 2015 was a really big year for RM and collaborations. Prometheus by Yankee featuring Doc 2, Juvie Train, Double K, RM as Rap Monster, Top Bob, and Don Mills is probably Nam June's most divisive collaboration. A popular theory about the song is that it's about the seven deadly sins. And what sin did 2015 Nam June get? lust. If you're a newer army or just haven't done any digging, early 20s Namjoon was, how do I put this, thirsty on Maine. Look no further than his covers of Illest Bitch and Expensive Girl. The lyrics in Prometheus that are most likely to get people hot under the collar are, I'm a pervert narcissist, and Opa, I like it, hit me harder. I can't even say it with a straight face. Personally, I do miss Thirsty Namjoon, and I really hope that one day he comes back and brings soap along with him. In RM's last collaboration of 2015, he was featured on the song You by Primary. That is the letter U, not Y-O-U. And another featured artist on this song is Kwan Jinna. And it's a very different song than the other collaborations he did. It was a song that talked about this burgeoning romance between two people. And it's really cool that Namjoon is the primary lyricist. And when you read the translation of the lyrics, it is pretty obvious that he wrote them. I think all the lyrics are really beautiful, but my favorite has to be, I'll be your underline because you're important. And I think it also stands out because it is one of Namjoon's mellower collaborations. The song Change is RM's most political collaboration. He made it back in March 2017, and it was a collaboration with Nigerian-American rapper Wale. The lyrics discuss problems that are faced by both Eastern and Western cultures, things like cyberbullying, distrust in the government, and racism. And fun fact, Wale wanted to collaborate with Namjoon after hearing his cover of Illest Bitch. In April 2017, Namjoon was featured as a lyricist and a performer on Gaja by Gecko, one half of the famous Korean hip-hop duo, Dynamic Duo. Gaja means elephant in Malay, and the lyrics talk about moving through life with elephant steps. Just don't worry about what the future holds. One of Namjoon's lyrics is, Are you going to be a star or a starfish? No disrespect for starfish, but if you want a fish, be selfish. In December 2017, RM collaborated with the American rock band Fall Out Boy on their Champion remix. He provided the first and fourth verses in English, which proved to everyone that his witty lyricism shines through in even his second language. I find it ironic that he says he was born in a car and has been driving, since he is literally the only member of BTS without a driver's license. And sonically, I really like this song because Namjoon's voice blends really well with Patrick Stump's. Patrick Stump is the lead singer from Fall Out Boy. They almost sound like one person at times. 
The song Timeless by Drunken Tiger reunited Namjoon with MFTBY's Tiger JK. This song was released in 2018, and in it, Tiger JK is reflecting on his 20 plus years in the Korean hip hop music industry. In his lyrics, RM is paying tribute to Tiger JK's work, so he references some of his songs and his albums. In 2019, RM was featured on Hone's Crying Over You remix, featuring Becca. Hone had always envisioned the song with a rap part, and that led Namjoon to write the third verse. And I think that the lyrics are the most interesting part of this song, because it's very much a breakup song, but the couple doesn't say hurtful things to each other. Instead, it's really mature. They wish each other well and hope that the other can find a partner who is the right fit. And it's really the ideal way to end a relationship. It's a really beautiful song. Out of all of RM's collaborations, the one that is probably the most important has to be 2019's Old Town Road, Soul Town Road remix with Lil Nas X. If you follow me on Twitter, you may think I'm biased because the only non-K-pop artist I follow and tweet about is Lil Nas X. And yes, he is a marketing genius and Montero is album of the year material, but that is not why this collaboration matters. This collaboration matters because this is the song that got BTS on stage at the Grammys for the very first time. So really, we can all thank Lil Nas X for Jimin with slicked back hair and glasses. Thank you for your work, sir. Namjoon's most recent collaboration was the song Don't with Aeon. It was released this year in April 2021. Namjoon wrote the majority of the lyrics and Aeon was the lead composer. And what's cool about this is they have been friends for years and they previously collaborated. Um, They did a song called Bad Bye on RM's 2018 playlist, Mono. We end the podcast with my favorite BTS collaboration of all time, 2020's Winter Flower by Yuna. Yuna is an amazing vocalist. She's like IU, but with an even stronger belt. So you combine this with RM's rapping skills and lyricism, and you have my absolute favorite song to shred my vocal cords to in the car. And if you can belt the high note at the end of the bridge, Please tell me how you do that. (laughs) Listeners, what's your favorite BTS collaboration? Did I miss any? You can send your unkpopular opinions to unkpopularopinionspod at gmail.com. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter at unkpopularpod. Thanks so much for listening, and don't forget to keep questioning.